Uh, hello everyone, this is uh, Russell Lowe speaking and uh, this is a tutorial on uh, CryEngine and, and in particular it's regarding uh, lighting in CryEngine. There's been a few new uh, sort of changes that have been made in recent um, in the recent version of the engine so I thought I'd go over a couple of those um, just so you can get some um, hopefully more satisfactory results uh, and even better than satisfactory some uh, fantastic results. Uh, so uh, this is a uh, model uh, that I've uh, quickly knocked up in, uh, in SketchUp and the idea is just to have uh, a random amount of openings and some holes in the walls and some ceilings and stuff like this that hopefully will uh, uh, demonstrate the quality of light and how they interact in shadows and stuff like that. Anyway, uh, you can see it's got a custom texture. Uh, this is of Justin Walters. Uh, motorcycle from uh, Vax Motor in New York. It's one of my drawings and, and his motorcycle. Um, anyway, plugins, play up, preferences. You can see that I've, uh, I'm exporting it to the lecture demo um, folder. So I just need to triple click on here, hit G, make it a component. We'll call this Arch one and right click and then uh, export such a geometry so I do I just exported this is the uh, uh, lecture demo uh, map that I created uh, in this week's or last week's lecture uh, go into the geometric entities and uh, go down and hit reload There we go, and there it is. So um, you just have to remember to hit reload when you're creating things with uh, creating objects with uh, CryEngine still open. You don't have to do that if uh, CryEngine is closed. Now you can see um, uh, when you're doing the export process, you can see that it's night time because we've got the moon and that sort of thing, but it's not very dark. And uh, so what we'll do. Um, with the lighting demo is uh, uh, to make it a little bit darker and make it a little bit easier to see right so hit terrain time of day now uh, what we want to adjust is the sky color now for some reason uh, the graph looks like this this is from zero hours to 24 hours uh, you can see middle of the day um, the light uh, is to be expected the shadows and all that sort of thing uh, but for some reason, these don't drop to zero or get darker uh, in the evening. Um, so I'd be interested to hear if anyone else has got a, a um, more interesting or a better uh, way to do this. But the way I'm doing it is hit the sky color and then simply drag these down to uh, drag, drag these three lines for RG the red and the green and the blue channel down to zero actually let me I'm using my middle mouse button to scroll in and pan uh, I'm going to drag them right down to zero because as you can see uh, they need to be zero so here's the um, here's the time slider you can see I can slide it across this is the rest of it which is normal I keep an eye on this side of the screen, sorry it's a bit, a bit small uh, in this demo but otherwise the video would be huge. Uh, scroll it across and you can see when it's right at zero it's black. So we'll just crank it just a little off black. Oh, that's just... So that makes it a lot darker. And the ground's a lot darker and the trees are darker. Now these are white so you'd expect them to be quite pick up a little bit of light from the uh, sky. Let's see if I can get it. Scroll down a little bit more. Okay, that'll do. That's uh, pitch black. <laughs> so you can pretty much can't see a thing. So that should be good for our lights. Uh, so now I'll close that. And then uh, that was the time of, the time of day editor. So now I can't see a thing. Uh, I'll go into the entities and you can see 
this is the range of entities you've got. We'll click the plus next to lights to expand that and drag and drop a light into the scene. And you can see it's already lighting things up. Um, I've got uh, select and move selected. If it was just selected, we wouldn't be able to move anything. So that's that one there. Or the one key. Uh, I use the one key exclusively because it's way faster. Now you can see that it's affecting things. And if we poke it inside there, you can see that it's affecting the inside now. But it's not, um, uh, let me reduce my speed, so the speed's down here if I hit the one, uh, point 0.1, you can see I'm going a bit slower so it doesn't uh, jerk you around so much, so hopefully that's a bit better. As you can see, my um, light is having an effect on the architecture and bring it outside, it can um, shine on the outside of the building and you can see the sitting the, hitting the ground as well. Um, but it's not casting any shadows, and this is something that's new. We have to turn those shadows on. Um, not sure why they did this, but uh, all we need to do is scroll down to the options uh, list and turn on cast shadows. Now, cast shadows is set to never, and if we look at my um, uh, information up here, I'm on very high spec, and if you go to display, uh, actually configure spec, you can see I'm on very high. Um, so, if I come down to cast shadows, I can turn that on to very high spec and instantly it casts a shadow. Uh, so let me move it around. So you can see as I go past these windows, it's casting shadows out there. Uh, now that's something interesting as well. Configure spec, if you've got a um, slow computer you might like to drop these down. But make sure your shadows are, are, are set to the same um, level so that they'll show up. Now, um, in the lecture, I uh, moved the lights around and it was all jerking all over the place. And let's see if I can make it do it. Radius, I'll turn the radius up to 30. That's going to make the light shine a lot further into the distance. And you can, well, it's a bit subtle, but you can see the shadows sort of like skipping a little bit. In the lecture, it did it pretty horribly around the trees. Let's see if I go over by the trees. No, it's actually doing. Oh, you yeah, know, see, it's doing it there, it's sort of skipping a little bit. Well, it did it pretty horribly in the lecture. Um, so, what you can do to avoid that, and it has no effect if it's static, um, so you can see that these are perfectly fine. Um, but if we scroll down to the bottom, uh, of the light um, uh, parameters, you can see shadow update ratio. I crank that up to a thousand, and you can see now it's perfectly smooth as I move this around. Um, now that's something that's not really, you know, critical if you're on a low spec system. But for me, it just really drove me nuts because it was uh, something that's so lovely about. Are so lovely about the uh, lighting system in Engine that it's so so powerful. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to copy this light. Uh, actually I'll turn it red first. So this is what I did in the lecture in the diffuse color channel of the light. I just double click on that, pick a red sort of uh, color and then drag this slider down so you can see everything's gone red. Okay. And look, look at the effect that it's had on the uh, uh, on something that's white. It makes it look kind of pinkish. Um, so then, what I can do is, with this light selected, like, and with select and move uh, selected, I can go Control C, and I and that instantly copies me another version of that light. And currently, it's still red. It has all of the same parameters of the last one. So. Uh, if you've got a bunch of lights that need to be the same, uh, but in different places, then create one, set it up how you want it, and then you can copy them. Uh, it saves you a bit of work. Uh, so it's all set to my shadows. I'm going to change the color. Uh, I did this in the lecture to blue. Got a dark blue, and you can see we've got a blue patch over here, a red patch over here, and then when they come together, if you put them right next to each other, you get a purple. Um, so, and that makes sense, so that's what you'd expect out of uh, light 
light sort of mixing. Uh, we can up the intensity of the light. Let me select this one and in the uh, under the diffuse multiplier, so the diffuse color and the diffuse multiplier. So we can crank this up to sort of 20 and you can see how much brighter it is. Um, and you can see that it over, pretty much uh, over blow, or I was going to say overshadows, but it, uh, it's kind of the wrong, uh, wrong way of thinking about it. But it um, uh, overwhelms the red uh, that's coming out of this light because this is set to 1. This is set to 10 times the amount. Um, so you can see that it, it has lesser of an effect. Uh, so maybe I'll put this inside. some shadows out there like that and uh, put this one here and shine that up against the wall so you can see what's going on we're getting these blue uh, blue light um, flowing out from the building or the architecture and the um, and this red light is shining on the surface of it so like I said in the lecture you want to be a bit careful that it doesn't turn into a disco extravaganza but um, there is some quite lovely effects that you can do to maybe, you know, warm warm it up a little bit, have some, well, let's just change that to turn this one off. You can actually turn them off without deleting them, so I'll do that. Uh, so I've got it selected in the roll-up bar down to Entity Properties, it's active, I'll turn it off, and you can see all of the lights coming from inside. Uh, this is a red uh, this is a red surface, so it's not coming from that light. You can see the wonderful sort of bloom effect uh, coming from, that, uh, from this light around the edges. That's uh, um, HDR lighting doing that. Let me change this to a yellowy, kind of warm, would be sort of like a looking for just a real yellowy kind of a warm you can see how it goes when it goes green you can see all of the stuff updating this is red this is green this is blue through purple and through the other side um, so it's quite amazing how these lights are updating in real time uh, so let's do it kind of yellowy warm kind of a yellowy colour it's kind of brownish really but and drop the intensity down to sort of five and it's sort of much more realistic you're getting a um, you're getting a kind of a warm effect kind of a welcoming kind of effect to the uh, to the architecture and the light comes out the other side okay so um, those are the couple. Of, those are the few things that I wanted to sort of expand on from the lecture the other day, uh, and you'll need to be doing all of these things um, to show us your designs in Arch One Hundred One. Uh, cheers.